O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There are days when I do not like Jesus. Don't get me wrong, I always will love Jesus. But there are times when the call of discipleship and the call to follow the example of Jesus just feels incredibly heavy, even oppressive. And I argue with Jesus about what I don't want to do. I'm with the disciples today. They go ahead of Jesus to a village to prepare the way. And I imagine they go into this village and they're greeting people and they're shaking hands and they're asking, you know, about their willingness to hear this message of love from this prophet Jesus. They have a perspective. They have a story. They have a message. It's a message of love a message from the one who asks us to believe that every person is beloved. And what happens? They're not received. They're rejected. They don't even have a chance to share how Jesus can change their lives, that following the way of love can make a difference. I'm there with the disciples today in that village. I am wondering how in the world we got to this place in our country where people are so frightened to listen to another perspective, so fearful of change that they close their ears, so angry when someone believes differently than they do that they are willing to just cut you off, pretend that you do not even exist call you all kinds of names, challenge your faith, challenge your patriotism, even challenge your very right to exist. How in the world do we get to a place where controlling women's bodies takes priority over the controlling use of guns? How in the world are we in a place where the people we have placed in powers of trust who promise with their hands on a Bible to care for all and serve all the people can just shut the door to anyone who differs from them and take away their rights. Today, I feel like those disciples. I understand why they would like to have fire rain down on the world. But we know how Jesus operates. Jesus turns to the disciples. Jesus doesn't even give them a compassionate word to say, hey guys, I know how you're feeling. He doesn't say, hey boys, you know, don't be talking like that. The scripture tells us that Jesus rebuked them. That is a harsh word. Jesus rebuked them. He gave them a strong disapproval about what they really wanted to do. And if I was the disciples, I would say, come on, Jesus, you know, give us a break. How many times do we have to put ourselves in a place where we're ridiculed and rejected? How can we love our neighbor, Jesus, when our neighbor hates us and takes away our rights and does not care about our very lives? How many times? Wouldn't it be so much easier to rain fire down? That would send a message, wouldn't it, Jesus, about who is in charge? But Jesus, that Jesus, <laughs> he has a different message. Follow me. Do not look back. Do not keep your face turned towards the rejection and the pain and the ridicule. Look ahead. Put your hand on that plow. Move forward. Till that soil. Prepare it in such a way that seeds of love can be nurtured 
and grown. How many times has Jesus shared this message about moving forward, about not getting stuck in our anger and our pain? How many times has Jesus told us that wishing harm or causing harm on another is not going to bring about the kingdom of God? How many times has Jesus warned us that by behaving in those ways, we won't create a better world? How many times has Jesus told us stories about, yes, life can be frustrating, the laborers are, are few, we know that, but the harvest can be plentiful. How many times did Jesus tell us, go ahead, plant those seeds? Yeah, sometimes the soil is really hard and won't accept the seeds. Sometimes the soil will accept the seeds and then the seed grows up and it gets scorches and it's eaten by the birds. But Jesus says, keep going, keep planting because some of those seeds take root. How many times does Jesus tell us to forgive? You want to say, Jesus, give it up. You know, 70 times 70, which doesn't mean you take out your calculator and, may, and say, oh, I've done 70 times 70, I'm done forgiving. It's meant to mean on and on and on. Turn the other cheek, behave differently. Be different. Jesus tells us that if we do not love, if we seek revenge, if we want to eliminate our neighbors, what good will that do? We are no better than the ones we're complaining about. Even more, even more, and this may be a part you don't like either, even more, Jesus says, absolutely Nothing should get in the way of following him. Nothing. Nothing. We cannot tell Jesus, well, today I would just like to have some revenge and be a little angry, ticked off, and then tomorrow I'll wake up and start to be a different kind of person. No. Jesus says, now. Now. No excuses. No waiting. No, not until I do this or that, now. Gosh darn it, Jesus. <laughs> I love you, <laughs> but sometimes I really don't like what you're asking me to do. Either we commit ourselves to the gospel of love and grace, even when everything in us wants to act contrary to that love, or we don't. Well, you and I know we may not like it, but Jesus is right. Wishing harm on those who disagree with us or even want to eliminate us is not the answer. Jesus asks us to live a different way, to behave a different way, to believe a different way, to speak a different way, to keep on going and to don't give up. So in light of everything that's going on, my promise to Jesus this day is I will do everything in my power to take my pain, my anger, my bewilderment, my fear, my anxiety about the future, and turn it into words that will invite another way. I will not be silent, but I'm going to work as hard as I can with God's help so that my words won't harm. I will turn my anger and pain into actions that will break down the barriers between people. I will not allow another's anger to consume me. And I will invite you to join me in ensuring that the rights for all people, all people are honored by our country that proclaims liberty and justice for all. I will do as Jesus has asked. I will keep on moving forward, and I hope you will too, believing that love can make a difference. Amen. May we join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, through all the changes and predicaments in our lives, 
we can always count on your love and your grace that will abound. May we hear your voice calling to us today to be the people you have called us to be in word and in deed. Enable us to discern the ways in which you have gifted us. May you give us the courage to use those gifts to bring about a better world. Enable us to discern the ways in which you have equipped us and guided us for such a time as this. Stir within us the grace and the courage to pursue the ways in which the Spirit of Jesus leads us into lives of love. Help us not to make excuses. Help us to be the followers and the disciples of the one who gave us such love and hope and peace. And may we trust you, God, trust you unequivocally today and on the days ahead. Thanks be to you, O oh God. Amen.